We are D and Allie. Come along and join us aboard Journey. Oh, oh yeah, seasons change. No promise of tomorrow, but that's okay. Just live in the moment day by day. For more information about our planning and preparing for our Mexico crossing, check out our blog post. The link will be in the description below or visit soulmatesjourney.com. We didn't leave the Dry Tortugas until 3.30 p.m. to arrive in the morning hours in Mexico. It was a little rough leaving, but just two hours in, a southeast wind quartered our stern and the first night was peaceful with a mostly full moon. Maybe the Gulf Stream helped settle the seas some for us. Salt Shaker pulled anchor before us, but chose a different path out of the dry Tortugas, which would actually put them several miles behind us. We kept up with them until well into the night when we lost them on our screen. The first night crossing was a smooth ride from sunset to sunrise. Day two was more of the same, only a little better. We cruised through the calm waters about 25 miles off the coast of Cuba, which probably helped some with the wind and wave block coming out of the east. We saw hundreds of Portuguese men of war. It felt like some migration we were traveling through. According to the National Geographic site, Portuguese man of war compromised four separate polyps. It gets its name from the uppermost polyp, a gas-filled bladder, which sits above the water and somewhat resembles an old warship at full sail. Man of Wars are also known as blue bottles for their purple-blue color of the uppermost polyp. The tentacles are the Man of Wars' second organism. These long, thin tendrils can extend 165 feet in length below the surface. Although 30 feet is more the average, they are covered in venom-filled nemesis used to paralyze and kill fish and other small creatures. For humans, a man of war sting is excruciatingly painful, but rarely deadly. Man of wars are found sometimes in groups of a thousand or more floating in warm waters. They have no independent means of propulsion and they either drift on the currents or catch the wind with their uppermost polyp. To avoid threats on the surface, they can deflate their airbags and can briefly submerge. Very interesting sea creatures who are actually sailing like a sailboat through the water, but obviously not ones you want to tangle with, literally speaking. Off the coast of Cuba, halfway there. Just as we passed the tip of Cuba near San Antonio, southwest winds rolled up the sea for a couple hours, giving us a Bronco ride and six foot. Just off of San Antonio, Cuba. A little sporty right now, but the day has been really nice, so and the weather report says it's gonna be laying down. I hope it's right. Just before dark we made a more westerly turn and as predicted the wind started laying down. And the seas more falling, and we were thankful for this better ride of the sunset on our last night. It's 8 o'clock, and it has calmed down. Thank goodness. I predicted to, just as I say that, of course. But overall, it's coming down, and 
supposed to only get better. And then the winds are supposed to switch around to the northeast, which would be perfect for us. So. My back is still very sore, and some movements cause a lot more pain than others. But I've almost completed the crossing, although it was not as I expected with this injury. Night was again all we could ask for, and the moon gave us some visibility. Around 3 a.m., we hit the Yucatan current, and we were slow to four to five knots at times with periods of six knots. Up till now, we have been averaging seven to eight. The slow travel would stay with us until we arrived in Mexico. We enjoy a beautiful sunrise and nice water with big swells that were well spaced and following. We are anxiously awaiting our first sight of land. nautical miles out we get our first glimpse of land after 40 plus hours. The coastline begins to rise out of the waters and we get a real glimpse of Isla Mahara. As we round the north end of the island of Isla Mahara, we get our first real look at the island and the resorts along the shoreline. Next we pass through the anchorage toward our marina. We arrive in Isla at 11 a.m. our time, 10 a.m. in Mexico at the Marina of Isla Mujeres, where we are allowed to use the resort facilities while we wait for the check-in process to begin. I realized that throwing lines was not what my back ordered, but I would have to dock in PA one more time and throw lines before putting this back injury behind me. I enjoyed soaking in the pool at the resort in Isla Mujeres, and although the wait to check in was a little long, because we arrived on a Sunday, and Monday was a holiday, Benito Juarez's birthday. He was the 26th president of Mexico and the first of indigenous origin. Hola, Mexico. We made it. We are living in the moment, capturing enjoyment. Oh, we are living in the moment, life full of enjoyment. Oh, we're